Hi, I'm Madonna Guy, and you're here with the Natural Alternative Podcast. Welcome. We're here today with Dr. Michelle Greenwell. Welcome, Michelle. Hello. Thank you for having me. Well, our brief little discussion just then, we will have no problems having a chat for a while. Tell us a little bit about how you like to work with health with clients. Perfect. I actually, um, I can work one-on-one with clients and I do love it. I do love it. But I really am empowered by group sessions because when all of us come together to put our goals in place and set our intentions together, we can magnify. Oh, it's and, so true. Yeah. And it's, you know, and it's things that you might not have thought of. And then when you link them all together as a group, it changes the aspect of even your own goal and how you might look at it or how you might respond. Um, and then the other piece that I really enjoy is movement to heal the body. That's where I'm most passionate. So yes, I can do a manipulation of um, an energy line. I could touch a point on the head. I can, I can do those kinds of clinical style work, but I really enjoy facilitating movement sessions to empower people to have those tools for themselves. Mm, beautiful. So how long have you been doing this type of work? I'd like to say since I was like preschool, (laughs) just with all the things that I kind of, as you go back and you look at your life, right? And all the things you chose to do. And I always chose to do dance and movement all the way through. I chose psychology when I went off to university uh, for the first time. And from there, um, the healing work I've done for, I would say the last 20, 25 years, um, and really intensely in the last decade as I was working on my dissertation. And where, so you do group sessions in person, you do group sessions online. How does it work for you? Yeah, well, you know, lucky COVID. (laughs) COVID took me from teaching in six different communities across a week into online work and the online work completely transformed because I was able to access people I hadn't been able to access before. And I live in a rural community, so I did have to travel from town to town, but when I'm online, there's so much more that I can do, more more people I can access, but also then we have the integration of all those people from different perspectives. And that's also interesting. I ran a foundational course recently and it was really interesting because I had one from Canada, some from US, some from Ireland, some from the UK and a couple from Australia. And it was great because their levels of experience, I had everyone from total newbies in the healing space to 36 years experience as an integrative practitioner and everything in between. And the questions and the comments, that's what makes it really powerful. Yeah. You know, and, I, and I, I'm sure you're exactly the same because you've been training for so long like me. I don't want anyone left behind. Ask that question because you are not the only one who will have that, that question. Someone else will be thinking the same thing and is too chicken to put their hands up. Exactly. Yeah. So powerful. So with your, because you're an integrative practitioner. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Is that in relation to the dance, in relation to the structural and the energetic stuff? Like yeah. where does that fit in? Well, it's, it's fascinating because it it's all just there. Yeah. And, you know, we think of dance by itself and we think of Tai Chi by itself. And Tai Chi is often thought of as an exercise form, but it really is about energizing the body. You're opening up energy lines. You're creating space between the joints. The breath is going deeper. So energetically, you're doing all these wonderful things because you're moving. Some people will call that exercise. But if you add intention to it and you're very specific and prioritize it for the person or the group, then you can actually magnify how quickly you can get at a, a challenge. So it could be a pain, could be an ache or complaint, could be a coordination problem. It could be not being able to deep breathe because a lot of people are holding their breath or uh, breathing shallow just from their posture and some of it is you can have your posture changed in minutes and that changes how you think changes how you respond to people changes on the decisions that you'll make as well amazing so and just recently i was chatting to a practitioner who was talking about the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous systems 
-hmm. and that when we are breathing out, we're activating the parasympathetic nervous system, whereas when we're breathing in, it's more the sympathetic. Is that correct in your knowledge level? Because it's only new, this information in my brain, and I've sort of Googled it a bit, but haven't quite got it under my... I haven't looked at it from that perspective. I would say that the most important part is to realize that there are these cycles that run through. And in Tai Chi, we would say the energy comes in the left side and exits the right. And so if you have a block within the center of the body through the core, then you can't move from one to the other. So it wouldn't matter if you were breathing in or out because the important part is you need to have that free flow everywhere. Yeah, nice. And if you think, if you think about fluid, if the diaphragm doesn't move, it's, it's stuck because you're doing shallow breathing, the fluid on the top half of the body cannot get to the core and the fluid on the bottom half of the body cannot get to the core. So you need to have this complete whole flow happening. In Tai Chi, we don't worry about um, the way that you're breathing. We're not counting in for four and breathing out for four or box breathing, the different kinds of breath opportunities you have, you just breathe. And then the way that you move uh, takes the muscles and tissue and expands and contracts it, moves the diaphragm, and then you have this whole body movement piece that just links it all together. So then it doesn't matter in or out, it just creates the balance and flow that you need. Mm, wonderful. Yeah, my brain sort of, obviously, I can't help myself as you're speaking, my brain's going, oh, so what if the celestial circuit is out of balance? What if this? What if that? So my, my brain's sort of going, what would that cause? Yeah, and then my brain went, is the left side the feminine and the right side masculine? Does that really get affected by that lack of being able to cross that midline as well? Absolutely. And then the love, you know, I could definitely deep dive into why, how, use the biofeedback and muscle monitoring to get deeper and deeper into some of those pieces. And I could also assess how the field is working and what levels are happening. I can do that as well. But when you're moving, you don't have to worry about it because yeah. it'll take care of itself. And so for those people that just want to move, that's okay. Those of us who, who have those deep questions that are going, but how come and why and how many other places can I play? I absolutely love to do that. And so depending on which class I'm doing, I sometimes deep dive and sometimes it's just movement. Yeah, okay. Fabulous. And with the movement, like it's funny you said you're from four years old, whereas I had no, none, no interest or knowledge of natural therapies until I was in my early 20s, I was that person who always wanted to go to the doctor, that person who always wanted a diagnosis, that person who I was disappointed at 20 years old when I didn't get uh, a prescription for glasses when I asked for one. He said, take 10 minutes off the computer every hour. And I was like, oh, right. No, and I was so <laughs> disappointed. So I was one of those people. So it was very interesting to me when I found naturopathy and then started doing the muscle monitoring overlaid on that and now I can't imagine my life without either of them as yes. It, yeah, it, it, it is, isn't it? And and even the tools, because lying in bed first thing in the morning to know that, oh, my knees feel a little bit stiff. Maybe I slept too crunched up for the night. And to be able to run a couple different exercises and it lets go before you get out of bed. You yeah. know, how lovely is that? Absolutely. And how lovely is um, getting in the car and you've got a drive that's maybe 30 minutes and the entire 30 minutes you're energizing. And so then you get out of the car, you're not tired because you were thinking about all the things you needed to accomplish today, but you actually spent 30 minutes energizing. So when you got out of the car, you're like, okay, what's happening? Let's go. <laughs> it's a completely different way of living. It is. Absolutely. So how does your, like from your own health perspective, what sort of things do you add into your day that just keep you healthy and vitalized and up and running? I, I have a tea company. So one of the things I did is I um, took time to learn about the essences of the herbs. So a lot of times people, they want the herbs to solve their problem. So I can't sleep very well. So what herb could I take? so yes. that I could sleep better. But instead, I'm always looking at how can I energize and bring balance and flow so I don't have that problem, but then I can have the herbs lift me up. 
So I played around with the herbs, played with them within tea, but also just within, you know, being able to go outside in the grass and put your feet in the grass. Um, I enjoy getting up in the morning and doing a Tai Chi set. Um, if my husband and I can do it together, that's even better. And I have someone to share it with. I goal set every day. And so I'm not just running through my day trying to get my to do list done. I actually know the quality of the kind of day I want or the way I want to feel when I get to the end of the day. Yeah. And that can change things as well. And I also play with a lot of art. So behind me, you see um, things that I love. So this is in my living room, but in my studio, it is covered in uh, intentional art that's all been placed or um, different sayings or uh, different textures that are there, all ways for me while I'm doing my work to be able to be lifted all the time. Mm -hmm. And I always sit on a flat chair that usually I have a back on, on my chair in the office, but I actually never use it. So I, it could just be a bench. Um, so I'm always sitting straight up and I'm dynamically moving all the time so that I make sure I'm not frozen uh, in front of my computer because I do spend a lot of time at it. Yeah, absolutely. How long are the sessions you do online? They can range from 45 minutes to an hour and a half. 75 yeah. minutes to an hour and a half, depending. Usually, <laughs> I'd say 75 minutes, but we all love to talk. So by the time we get to the end, it's usually an hour and a half. Yeah. Okay. And that gives us the opportunity to really spend some time in goal setting. And really, uh, we'll be pulling cards, playing with art, color, before we start any of the other activities. And that gives us lots of time to really collaborate on what those intentions and goals are going to be. Nice. I was in a mastery immersion course a couple of weekends ago and they were talking about how 90 percent of the thoughts we have every day are identical to the thoughts we had the day before and the day before that and the day before that so if we are not creating our life it is simply replaying the same mm -hmm. process over and over and over again so we go gee i wish my life would change but 90 percent of us is going no you don't it's exactly the same because you haven't done anything different so, yeah. and they were also talking about, and I remember I read the, one of the first books I read a million years ago was Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway. And I remember mm -hmm. at the time she talked about the fact that we have 70,000 or something thoughts a day and we're in it when we're in a negative space, most of them, most of them can be negative and our brain believes what we tell it, regardless of whether it's truth or imaginary. Mm -hmm. So the goal setting I find absolutely important because people don't realise, people don't realise, they think they want to change their life, but really they're doing absolutely nothing to change it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And one of the things about negativity and judgmental thoughts is that comes from an imbalance in the systems. So if you do something to bring them back into balance, the thoughts just disappear which is really amazing. So for somebody who maybe has those reoccurring judgmental thoughts, either for themselves or the people around them, to realize that that's just a sign. And if they stopped and took a little bit of time to take care of themselves, they could change that. And it would require no effort moving forward. It would just be you think differently and you'd say things differently. You might hang out with different people too, just because you realize maybe those people aren't influencing you energetically to be lifted and having vitality. And so you actually shift who you want to hang out with as well. Yeah, the vibration, that vibration shifts. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah. And once we're aware of that, because a lot of people aren't aware of that, you know, we can be angry and we attract angry people into our life and allows us to stay angry because that's where our vibration wants to sit. Or if we're mm -hmm. ashamed or feeling ashamed about something then we will bring people in that will allow us to feel ashamed all the time so it feeds into that so absolutely everything is mm -hmm. vibration yes mm -hmm. yeah and with the movement obviously you've done a lot of study in that area because I'm sort of yeah. quite curious about like like you said things can shift within minutes if you have something that's really blocked in there so as you're moving, I'm imagining that there are meridians and energy flows and all sorts of things that are shifting 
Is it, and it's the whole kit and caboodle? Is it chakras? Is it meridians? Is it everything? The whole, whole kit. Right. And because we like, we might have been trained in learning and understanding certain systems. So we think from that system perspective. And some people really like to work with chakras. I enjoy five element theory from Chinese medicine, but in effect, everything is working together as one. We just decide where we want to focus. But if you just focus on whole body and whole, I say whole body, but that'd be whole systems. Yes. If you do that, then, then everything has the chance to be in balance. It's yes. when we stop and we say, I'm only going to pay attention to the root chakra right now. Then the body goes, oh, okay, only pay to, <laughs> to the root chakra. That's fine. That's where we'll focus. But you might be trying to solve it from the root chakra and you might not even be in the right area. So rather than consider yourself the expert in it, just consider the body as the expert. And I say body with the whole biofield. So that's it has the whole perspective. It knows what it needs. All it needs for us to do is inspire that opportunity for the balance and flow. And then it can do what it needs to do. When was the first time you were aware of the, I mean, obviously the dance and movement and that sort of thing your whole life. When was the first time you were more aware of these etheric energies, the auras, the chakras, the meridians, just out of curiosity? You know, I, yeah, and you know, I think as a child, I probably had that, but didn't realize it. And it's when you look back and you go, oh, I used to do this, that, and the next thing, and you go, huh. But more more would be in the last 20 years. And from the energy perspective of really diving into um, more than the chakras and the meridians, so really into the biofield, into the org field, would be in the last 10 years. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it is. It's amazing once you start playing with these things, isn't it, how much fun it is and how much change you can make with people's lives, you know. People don't yeah. even realise that things are blocking them, that are stopping them from moving forwards. That can be shit. And the conversations are so rich. You know, you're not talking about the weather and you're not talking about an ache and a complaint. You're talking about really interesting concepts and ideas. And um, if you've worked with someone who uh there was one week i had a couple of weeks ago where three different people came in all with sciatic nerve pain and they came into to movement class or they came into conversation with me and to be able to move that out of them in two minutes and they've had it for weeks you know that then the whole room is going how did you do that and the conversation around maybe those aches and pains we're holding on to aren't forever and maybe they don't really need to stay any longer than to be recognized. And and how different a conversation than, oh, how is your leg today? You know, yes. uh, you've moved, you know, you can't move this way or that way, or you had to skip out of an event because you couldn't get there, whatever. That's a lot different discussion than empowerment and the people around you being energized and empowered by the conversation of you managed to solve a problem mm -hmm. and they benefit from it and everybody moves forward yes and now yeah. there's a lot of research and uh science that's sort of catching up with the fact that our brain has a huge amount of control over how much pain we're in mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. there's lots of studies going on at the moment that sort of say that like 99 percent of fibromyalgia and 99% of sciatic pain and 99% of back pain and you know like most of it we can control through our meditation through our breathing techniques through our awareness in our bodies have you heard those there's uh two particular ones that I really love stories about guys I think one guy was in Canada actually but two particular guys that I love in relation to pain so one of them was on a work site by himself I think this one might have been the UK actually jumped off a building a huge nail went through, his, no, he had a huge nail go through his hand. He drove himself to the hospital with zero pain and it wasn't until he got there and they removed the thing and then once he was being looked after, the pain kicked in because mm -hmm. his brain knew he needed to get from there to the hospital and allowed him to do it. Person number two, I think this one was in Canada, he jumped off a building site, plenty of people around him with his big hobnail boots, a big nail went through his foot. He was in 10 out of 10 in pain. They helped him get to the hospital. 
They got him there. They cut the boot off after giving him morphine and the nail had missed his foot. It had gone through his toes. So his brain had told him he was in 100% of pain and I'm sure he was. I don't think he would have been making it up. Meanwhile, the other guy had zero pain until he was being looked after. So the power of the mind is incredibly, mm -hmm. it's, it's incredibly powerful and we need to give it credit where credit's due. What is mm -hmm. your tea company called? The Cape Breton Tea Company. Cape so Breton. I live on Cape Breton Island in Nova Scotia. Yeah. Beautiful part of the world. I'm so, uh, yes, love to go there one day. <laughs> it may or may not happen. But anyway, I would love to go there one day. Beautiful. And with your, do you sort of, with the integrate, because you're Dr. Michelle Greenwell, so where mm -hmm. that's because of a, the, like the doctor part of it, is that in what area? Is that in counselling? Mm -hmm. Is that in psychology? Is that in integrative Complementary and integrative health. Beautiful. Yeah. So I do have a degree in psychology and I have a master's in CAM, complementary and alternative medicine. And the holistic nurses have taken on the title of complementary and integrative health. And so that's an area where they're expanding that terminology to get away from medicine, because all of it is about wellness and how you take care of yourself. And uh, so rather than go with CAM and using that medicine title, I went to integrative health. And then I, I do, my focus is on movement as my specialty, although I can muscle monitor and figure out whatever needs to happen in order for people to just feel better. Yeah. And with the hand, with the muscle monitoring, that can be hands-on as well as online? Yeah. You know what? Online, uh, this was the greatest gift. <laughs> Another yeah. gift. Another yeah. gift of COVID. Online is faster. It is faster to work with people online than it is to be in person. So, and it's not because you uh, don't have to get to the appointment. It's because you don't have this interaction. This is my view anyway. You don't have this interaction of the, the two fields coming together where it slows down a little bit because of that physical, physical structure piece of interaction. And we don't really notice that so much because we enjoy being in the presence of other people. Yeah. But when you're That's online, amazing. you can energetically connect a little bit quicker. And so the response can be fast. And I do, I, yes, I can monitor on a person, but I really enjoy using the body pendulum, which allows the person to do their own monitoring. And that empowers them for when I'm not present to be able to continue to use the tool. And so I have really enjoyed transitioning over to that tool and, and providing the space for people to learn a little bit more about themselves. Beautiful. And how can people contact you? The best way is dancedebut.com. That's my main oh. website. Uh, they can reach me through the Cape Breton, capebretontea.ca is another way. And on the dancedebut.com website, I have a, um, a pop-up that comes up with the top eight energy stress releasers. So they can then get integrated right away um, and they can use the button for contact right there. And that'll be the fastest way. Is there a little tool that you can share right now for people just to give them an idea? Is there something that you have? Absolutely. Up yeah, my favorite, because we were talking about the nervous system. So my favorite to release the nervous system, if you check in with your head and just see how much mobility you have. So if you just turn one way, notice what it feels like. And then turn the other way. And you may notice it feels the same, or it might be slightly different on each side. You might notice it cracked. It might not have turned as far as you thought you could turn. And so what I invite you to do now is just take your hand. It can be the same hand as ear, or it can be opposite. And you're just going to unroll the ear from the top to the bottom. And we're going to do it three times. The second time you're going a little bit closer into the ear, just massaging it all the way to the bottom. And then the third time, just getting deeper into the ear. And if you look at what time of day it is at the moment, so you're in the morning, I'm in the night. Um, you can see what time it is. This will actually reset the body clock. 
So this is great if you're a traveler. So I went across the country the last couple of weeks. So um, I did this everywhere I went and just jumped into the next time zone, which was lovely. It saves on, you know, being able to see and visit with as many as possible. <laughs> okay. So now if you turn your head, notice what it feels like to turn it. Definitely less tension. Right. Interesting. So you're going to have a little bit more range of motion mm. and your vagus nerve comes up and it comes up behind the ear. So what we just did is inspired it to release and let go. So for those people that talk about the polyvagal theory and the tension, how the nervous system functions, we actually can calm it just by rubbing the ears. I it would love also... you to chat for a moment about the vagus nerve. It's such a hot topic <laughs> at the moment. Is that okay? Yeah, I will hopefully. Let me see what I can tell you. Yeah. <laughs> what would you like to know? Well, look, it's one of the, like, even from the perspective of the challenges the last few years, I know a lot of doctors who are aware of the vagus nerve just because of stress and tension and, you know, being compressed in our world the last couple of years as opposed to having been open before that. You know, it just felt like so many people were coming in with vagus nerve issues, so many people connecting it to gut, so many connecting it to stress and anxiety and depression and all sorts of things. So, and mm -hmm. I've been aware of the ears, but I, and that's sort of really cool because it's the largest nerve in the body, of course. So, mm -hmm. and it regularly shows up in my bioresonance as well for people as being a traumatized nerve at the moment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, if you think about it as, it's reading all of the systems. So it's, it's the major biocomputer. So if it's reading all the systems, everywhere that there's tension, it's not going to be able to read the systems as easily. So what you really want is to have everything as relaxed as possible, so that it can read the systems, it can understand what function is required, and then allow the body to open to be able to provide that, that change or that shift. So for those people that sit at their desk with posture that puts tension into this area, that information is not going to travel. So you're going to have some, some stiffness there, but then you're also going to have, depending, depending on what's going on for you in your life, it could be gut issues, then it could be breathing issues, it could be joint pain just depends on what kinds of things you're facing and whether you're facing them well or not um, and if you have the opportunity to relax through the system and get that deep breathing happening and i talked about how you need different systems working in order for everything to come together so the the nervous system is a way of reading but also the way you move has a way of providing information back through that system so that the brain can determine you need more hormones in a certain area, you need more uh, different kinds of synapses going on, you need different, different chemicals flowing through, but it can't do that without that, that opportunity of the flow. Mm, I did not know that it kept an eye on every system in the body. That's so exciting. I love those yeah. little things. Yeah. Yeah, and it, it wraps around each organ. And in Tai Chi, when we go to do, particularly when we're doing the seated form, uh, just because you can experience it a little bit easier. So as an example, so we, we did, when we rubbed the ear and I asked you to turn your head, you noticed the range of motion improved. But what also happened was when you went to change your head, your movement changed. So if you turn your head again and just notice now how the rest of the body reacts to you turning your head. So you turn your head and you'll notice that right from the base of your spine, your whole body wants to turn to help you move your head. And the first time we did it, it was like, here's my head, <laughs> isolated movement, because right. we, we were trained to do that, right? Yes. Um, but as soon as the body is integrated, it does whole body movement. So now that whole body movement, when you go to turn your head and you feel your whole core do that spun rotation there, you just inspired all the organ systems because they all had to move in order for you to accomplish that. When you were back at isolated movement, there's no information going anywhere. Yeah. So in Tai Chi, some of our 
most basic moves are small rotations through the spine and creating the space within all the organs that they can talk to each other. And that's through the vagus nerve. Fabulous. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I imagine that, and with, I'm now thinking with your online sessions that you do with people more one-on-one, -on -one, uh, I imagine you do train them in some of these movements that are going to change their lives as well. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yes. And last session for my Movement Made Easy class was an eight-week block. We focused on the nervous system and we started with what comes up in the textbook and the sympathetic, parasympathetic. We worked our way through the structural aspects of what people look like, but then we shifted from there into the energetic part of the nervous system. And then how does the biofield interact with the nervous system? And once we got into that space, things started changing in such dramatic ways. So it was, it was really fun to do it that way. Also, I work with um, intuitive musicians. And so we're able to bring in sound and color. And sound and color are the fastest way for anybody to make a change because the frequency goes so quick. And so by working with an intuitive musician, we were really able to move ourselves through movement patterns, um, just where you get lost in them. That, so that meditative component, and then that rhythmic piece starts to come into the body. And once that rhythm's in there, everything just starts to flow so much easier. Awesome. Mm -hmm. And I imagine even when you're working hands-on with people, you would be very aware of the way that your body is moving. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've only just yeah. started, you know, because I've been doing uh, hands-on body work for nearly 30 years. So you can imagine everything with me has been going forward for a long time. So my chiropractor has been working with me on, on those movements where I'm more, you know, I'm more anyway, so, so that I'm doing less damage from here up. You know, I'm sort of really getting to that age where I can't just keep doing what I've been doing for 30 years because it, it, it shows up in the body. The, the issues are in the it, tissue. It does. And, and you're also, you're working forward. Yes. So then when you, and just to take that as an example, we, cause we do that when we're in front of the computer too, right? This, yes. this forward piece, then the only way that you have for your mind to work in its capacity is in this one plane. But when you're moving whole body, you've got, everything it's a multi-dimensional thing and so from a facilitator perspective if you're doing body work it's lovely to be able to move through the space in all those directions and that's where working um you know i don't have the massage table everybody comes in lies down and they're ready to receive we're sitting in chairs talking to each other and figuring out where are we going to go and i spend a lot of time having them walk around the room and notice the changes that are happening with each piece that we do so that they integrate it, but also they can sense it. So the next time they're out and about and they notice all of a sudden their head starts to droop, they can go, why is my head drooping? It shouldn't be drooping right now. Instead of, you know, you fix it on the table and that person has gone forward with them, that you actually bring that multidimensional piece back in for them as well. So, Beautiful. yeah. Yeah, but that's that's the way that I like to work because it's um, uh, more facilitator than clinician style. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's fabulous. Any final thoughts for people? I, I'm just loving uh, that. That's just wonderful. Any final thoughts for people? You know, keeping obviously they can contact you on your e on your websites. Mm -hmm. uh, right. Hands on, distance. You know, whatever. When does your next classes start? I'll be starting up again in September. Yes. So for the month of August, there'll be some uh, lovely introductions of different ideas. I have a podcast, uh, Be Well with Michelle Greenwell, where I'm sharing lots of different ideas about how I do my work. And each podcast is set up so that you have a balance by the time you finish the podcast. So while you're listening, you can actually be energized by the time you get to the end. Um, so that'd be another way that people might want to play. And then my YouTube channel is full of exercises and opportunities for people to get started. And it's lovely to get started, but really if they think about being in a group, that group setting is just gonna magnify things. Um, and my Qi integration program, which I didn't talk about, which is 
Um, it's an in-depth, that's where we're diving into all the different energy aspects. Um, we can go in many directions in the class. Um, that's a deep dive. And so for those people that tell us a little bit about that one. That, yeah, tell yeah. us a little bit about that one. Yeah, so that one, um, I'll have a theme at the start of the um, class, and I very often send it ahead of class so that they can be thinking about what their goal is going to be in relation to the theme. So the theme could be today we're going to work on the 12th um, layer of the auric field. So we're going to go to the outside edge and we're going to look at how we interact with the outside world and bring that to us. Maybe that's the theme for the day. And my movements will all be related to that. Our conversation will be about how we would like that to be better for us, maybe where we have some blocks in that. And we would dive into what what that part of the energy field does for us and how it serves and the deeper dive into that. And then I'll integrate it with some art. I might integrate it with some music, maybe some sound. And um, yeah, and then we play. And where everybody's at, whatever everybody needs, then that's the movement patterns that we'll pull out to play with. Nice. <laughs> that would allow some really cool discussion. Sorry, my brain was going off on a tangent about toll-like yeah. receptors. Sort of, I know that, you know, our, our cells and our skin and everything has toll-like receptors, and I'm sure there is a similar thing in our layers of our auras and that sort of thing, because what mm -hmm. is it that allows someone's aura to be damaged or changed or shrunk or uh, broken or, you know, split, you know? So there must be something out there in the etheric world that allows that sort of thing to happen. And two, we spend a lot of time understanding how our joints feel, or in the case of our neck, what that range of motion feels like. We understand all that because we've been trained to be thinking about how we physically feel. But then when you start to, to notice, what do I sense outside of my field, or outside of my body into the field? What do I notice when someone else comes into the room? What do I notice when I have thoughts? What happens to more than me? Um, it becomes really interesting because then you, you start to pick up cues you wouldn't normally pick up. And like you said, you know, those people that come into the room you resonate with or don't resonate with, yeah. or even to be able to read a room before you even start to talk and to understand where people are at. And those kinds of things are all intuitively picked up after you start to play around a little bit with understanding how you feel and getting that flow going. Once the flow's going, understanding a little bit more about how you can be better at what you're doing yeah yeah oh, that's awesome so people and from a health perspective i mean i know all this is about health but from an organ from a that sort of perspective do you sort of talk about you know the different organs like the stomach and the spleen and the kidneys and the liver and absolutely so when we would be talking about the color their frequency um how they interact with the other organs around them as an example, or I spent a lot of time with feet. I came from losing the ability to walk on my feet because of the emotions that I pocketed um, and just all the angst that was going on in my life. And so I had to remove all of that um, emotion out of the tissue. So I know for those people listening for the first time thinking, what does that mean? But our emotions pocket in our bodies in different places and sometimes it repeatedly pockets in the same which leads to huge pain points sure. and that's what I experienced with not being able to walk um, and so I spent a lot of time with the feet and the feet have a direct relationship to the eyes so for those people who spend a lot of time on the computer if you can do dynamic sitting and you can play with your feet and do some repetitive pattern work with the feet, you can be supporting your eyes all day long at the computer. So I enjoy finding the ways of, in Tai Chi, we call it reciprocals, playing with different parts of the body to support other areas. Yes. And uh, that's always fun. Yeah, I had a bobcat driver going back 30, what, 28 years ago, I don't know, 27, 28 years ago. He was one of my first clients. 
And he, because he would sit on a bobcat all day long, he ended up with all this tension up through here. And the pain, particularly through the opponent's pollicis muscle in the hand. And I remembered saying to him way early on in the piece, you know, as I was sort of readjusting the bones in his forearms and stuff, I said, well, you know, it relates to the spleen meridian. So if you rub this little point in underneath the rib cage, yada, yada, yada. So then he would actually tell all his bobcat drivers, when your hands get sore, go and rub these points. And he did that for years, you know, to sort of help out his other bobcat drivers, which I thought, you know, these big, tall, tattooed, you know, bulky men, you know, they're all rubbing their little spleen meridian points. thought it was hilarious. Anyway, yes. People get oh, it, though, awesome. don't they? People get it. Well, you know, so when works. they've got something that works, yeah, they will do it. Yeah. However, And, you know, yeah. and I'm going back to uh, goal setting for a moment. One of my clients years and years ago, uh, she worked for one of the biggest radio stations here in Australia, and her team was the top earners in the radio stations for like 10 years in a row in Australia. And one day we were chatting about it and her whole team, she would get them to close their eyes and visualise their guides at the beginning of a team meeting and to imagine the amount of money they wanted to bring in in revenue that week or that month or whatever it was, and they consistently got their goals. Fabulous. And I just sort of, you know, it was just one of those things. I, I remember that to this day and I sent her off to see a psychic I knew just because I, I love this psychic. She had all sorts of other skills as well. But this particular woman, she sat down in front of uh, Jeanette the psychic and Jeanette said, oh, you're lucky. You've got you've got uh, six guides. And my client said, oh, no, I've only got five. And she knew because she was also an automatic writer. She would sort of put her hand to paper occasionally and just allow anything yep. to come out. And she would tell by the handwriting which mm -hmm. guide it was that was coming through. So mm -hmm. anyway, so Jeanette said to her, no, 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 you've got six. The tall one's just very quiet. <laughs> so, oh, oh, I love like that. Anyway. I love that. So I just, I you know, the whole goal setting thing, you know, it's it's really empowering when you know that even things like that, and I'm not thinking monetary gain for people, but very interesting in such an industry where there was a very specific, uh, a very specific, well, dollar amount that they were aiming for and they would consistently get their goals. Like, you know, yeah. so it really is very important to know what we're, know where we're heading, what we're heading for, and why we're heading to do it, because why would our brain bother if there's not a reason? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, all of uh, the board meetings we do for our organization here in Canada, um, it's the Canadian Association of Bioenergetic Wellness. We start all of our meetings with a goal and we activate it with some kind of movement pattern to energetically get everything into flow. And it brings everybody to the table, like to be right in there. And, you know, what happened at breakfast or in the car ride or all the other things just falls away. And also even our opinions fall away because we know where the goal is and everybody wants the goal to be achieved. And somehow, even if you have a difference of opinion or think it should be done a different way, you, you even step back because you think, yep, that way will work. So let's go with it. Instead of, no, I'd like it to be my way. Let's go with it. You know, it, it just... Um, but somehow it lets it, go of the ego. It does. It's beautiful. And so much more happens. And a lot of people will say, well, how, how do you get so much done? And it's just because the other stuff goes to the side. And when you know where you're going, when you know the roadmap, you know, this is my destination, you know, all the things that need to be there just kind of fall to you, come and join on. People send you emails. Um, ideas arrive that you hadn't thought about because they all want to be a part of your goal at the end and it's beautiful but if you don't know where you're going there's no reason for anything to show up and so yeah. then you're kind of on your own struggling through the pieces and with our board meetings we found that made a significant difference yes and with with my podcast even too it leads um it leads the direction of the conversation you know, it's just a beautiful addition. I actually pulled, which is really funny because I didn't think about it while I was talking before, but I pulled this card from my card deck. Yes. And what it's, it is, it's from the, there's four parts to the deck, but this is meeting the divine. 
Uh, miracles happen every day and every way. Invite miracles to your dinner table and feast on the bounty of the harvest. But this is in relationship to the 12th chakra, Relay 3. And I had pulled this before we started the podcast. And then when I was talking to you about the auric field, that was the example I threw in. Yes. And oh, I didn't realize nice. I had done that till just now I went look back at the card again. So, yeah. And you can just see how then that, that weaves through. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, that's awesome, Michelle. It's been wonderful chatting to you. And I, I oh. would love to do it again down the track. So I'm going to have a play myself with some uh, movement techniques. My my brother's been trying to get me to do his uh, process of yoga for a long time. So mm -hmm. I might uh, actually him and I are running a workshop soon. So I might try to get him to put some of those in there as well. He probably has not thought of that because uh, it's about you know, <laughs> like you. It's sort of about creating our future lives, you know, being conscious, mm -hmm. you know, in every yeah. aspect of our lives so that we are creating the world we want within yes. our, yeah, within our sphere. That, exactly. And then attracting the people who really support us and make us feel good at what we're doing. Yeah. Excellent. I will make sure I have your contact details down the bottom so that people can contact you. And Perfect. it's been lovely chatting. Hope you have a wonderful night's sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Enjoy your day. I and I look forward to the day when you say you're coming to Cape Breton because uh, we're always open to have company. So the, the bed is always here. So Beautiful. lovely to talk with you. Thank awesome. you so much. Thanks so much, Michelle.